Susie, let's start. What's up, Bob? I was going to say, let's start the recording. Perfect. Beat me to it. All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, we've been on a six week hiatus here for LEAD and today is Thursday, April 14th. Unfortunately, it feels like March 14th. Hang in there with this weather. Um, we have a good agenda here, I think, for you today to uh, assist you in managing uh, your activities and uh, sports here. So if we could go to that agenda at this time. Eric's gonna update us on uh, our board meeting that we had last week, along with rep assembly uh, items that we'll be voting on here May 10th. We'll talk a little spring season along with eligibility, and uh, we'll finish up with quick lists and uh, a checklist or to-do list to, uh, again, assist you in remembering what we have uh, before us here. So at this time, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Eric to review our board meeting from last Thursday. Eric? Thanks, Bob, and good morning, everybody. Welcome to LEAD here, and as Bob said, we've been away for a little while, uh, but things continue to move. We've had a, a really good tournament season, and we're into spring. Uh, our board met on the 7th uh, last week, had a, a great conversation on a number of items, but obviously some highlights coming out of that meeting were that uh, the board approved the hiring of two of the new associate directors, Lisa Quinn now serving in Austin currently, and Phil Archer serving uh, Creighton Durham Hall. And so we are glad to announce their hire and uh, welcome them to the league. They'll be joining here in the next month or two uh, as it works for their schedules. Uh, we also hired an assistant within the office, Randy Hill, uh, employee at Anoka Hennepin, has just started this week. Uh, and so we are working back toward the staffing that we need to have in place to be able to operate our programs. As many of you know, we, we were unable to keep some positions through the course of the pandemic. So it's good to be back in that way. A couple other items that didn't quite make the list here, but uh, you would want to know our board approved the conference placement of CGB and Ortonville into conferences uh, in the western part of the state. We used the conference placement committee to do that, and that was finalized at this last meeting. So thanks to those conferences and schools for uh, taking action here to, to bring those schools into the conference and be ready for the 22-23 school year. A couple of other things, uh, some tournament dates as well as timelines for uh, the meetings of the Minnesota State High School League have been approved. The projected calendar is ready to go for next year. And also, as you look ahead and think about things like area meetings in the fall, if you want to get dates on your calendar, uh, those have now been put in place and we'll be able to get those out to folks and have those there. A big part of what's happening right now are activity advisory proposals. And so you see four different uh, sports for us there that have submitted some uh, proposals. A number of these have to do specifically with the state tournament format, but there are certainly some things relative to regular season within that as well. Um, and uh, just as an example, um, basketball considering conference uh, adoption of shot clock for uh, next year only is a potential uh, policy that could be added. Um, wrestling some language relative to offering some girls only uh, invitational opportunities that would not count against your team total for your wrestling programs. Uh, is also something that's being considered. And those are regular season type things that are part of the proposals. As importantly, I would say talking about the activity advisory proposal process, as well as the adoption possible 
uh, process, I think it's really important that people understand um, where things are located and then how it all works. So you can see in the diagram there a red arrow that points to proposed rule changes. This is where you'd see both activity advisor proposals as they come forward, as well as the rep assembly items that are part of uh, our league. And so if we move ahead to the next slide, you can see that activity advisory process. So each one of our advisory groups meets with our director here at the league. They will consider and potentially uh, provide uh, proposals to the league to be considered. So there's a timeline that's involved and you can see uh, that that entire process is listed on page five relative to activity advisory. And so these are uh, coach advisor, coaching advisories for their particular sports that brings forward proposals, could also be supplied by some other folks, uh, but largely that's where they come from. And they come forward to the board and they also come to your region committee. So right now region committees are doing exactly what you see on that slide on the left side. And they're having the conversations about the positive and or negative uh, pieces connected to each one of these proposals, providing feedback back here to the league office to use with our board of directors as they consider these proposals. In addition, a straw poll is taken at each one of the region committees. This is different than rep assembly. In rep assembly, there is a passage or a failure of each of these, and that's part of uh, determining whether or not it moves on to rep assembly. This is for feedback and input. And so appreciate you being a part of those conversations and discussing those. Uh, take a look at those as, uh, as needed, and we get that information for right now. We're in the winter cycle. That information will come back to us on May 15th or by May 15th. They will be action items at the board of directors in the June board meeting. So the, if passed, they would go into effect for next year. And so again, we will continue to work that process. And you know, each one of our directors has been involved with their activities. And Bob, I turn it back to you just for a couple of ob observations around that process before we move on to rep assembly. Yeah, no, Eric, really well done. And I think just to highlight again, we're only talking winter sports proposals at this time and uh, action will be taken on those in June. So. Well done, Eric. Let's move on to uh, rep assembly. Thanks, Bob. Um, two items that are on the rep assembly uh, docket for this year, and we'll talk through each of these just a little bit more. The rep representative assembly will meet on May 10th, as you can see, that will take place at the Minneapolis Marriott Northwest. Uh, and so our delegates from each one of our 16 regions are, will come together uh, to take action on these. Um, when it comes to rep assembly, it requires a two thirds vote to change bylaw. So it's not a 51%, it takes a two thirds vote for passage of uh, any of these uh, proposals. So bylaw 110 is language that was adopted by the board of directors to be sent directly to the rep assembly. And bylaw 110 has to do with the consecutive years of eligibility within high school uh, athletics. And currently that rule states that beginning in seventh grade, you have six years. The amended language that is being proposed at this time changes that to allow students to participate in high school activities one time as a seventh grader. If they would repeat, they would not be eligible the second year for high school activities, one time as an eighth grader. And then beginning in ninth grade, they have four consecutive years uh, starting with their initial entry into ninth grade. And again, that is a proposed change to bylaw 110. And folks have asked, you know, when does that go into place or what, it, what does it exactly say? And so again, four years starting in ninth grade, that is consistent with the greatest number of states out there in terms of when the consecutive count actually starts. A, a few other states have the similar rule around seventh and eighth grade where you have one shot as a seventh grader and one shot as an eighth grader um, to be able to be at a high school level. And so that's what bylaw 110 uh, is being considered for. Uh, the second one, as many of you are aware, is the adoption of boys volleyball as a fully sanctioned activity here in Minnesota. We're all aware that we have girls volleyball and that this has been something that has been discussed and has been to rep assembly in the past. Again, when it comes to boys volleyball, uh, the number of schools and number of students is higher than it has been in the past. Uh, there continues to be energy for it. Um, and so that will be considered. One of the greatest questions is, so when will it be played? Because in the proposal, it leaves it to the Minnesota State High School League to play to determine the season in which it's going to be played if it would pass. The board is well aware of this. They are prepared and ready to pull together a committee 
uh, that would include coaches, officials, ADs, uh, likely region secretaries, uh, representative there to be able to provide a recommendation to the board in terms of what season uh, would be most appropriate. The question that's in front of the rep assembly is, do you or do you not support the sanctioning of boys volleyball within the Minnesota State High School League? It does indicate in the proposal that the two options for the start of boys volleyball, if it were to be approved, would be the spring of 23 or the fall of 23. And so depending on placement, it would come about calendar year next year, potentially could be within the coming school year or the following school year. Just wanted to try and clarify some of that. And again, we'll be communicating directly with each of our delegates to make sure they have the best information on both of those uh, potential bylaw changes. Bob, anything I missed there? No, I think it's just a, a good reminder here, Eric, before we get into the process, uh, we're talking about bylaws specifically, right? So if you look at your handbook or use your handbook, um, boys volleyball would be the 500 series of bylaws. We'll have to build policy on top of that or underneath that uh, if they were to be approved at the rep assembly. Uh, Eric, let's talk a little bit more about the process of uh, rep assembly at this time. Sure, so again, similar to uh, the policy that you see in the activity advisory, there is, uh, there's a flow chart that lists how this all works out. It begins in September and October with the submission. And uh, for those that pay attention and know this well, I don't want to take too much time, but it does go before regions. And this is different. This is where the regions actually vote. And it requires that nine of our 16 regions have to approve that it moves on to the board of directors, or there is a possibility that the board can take action by a two thirds vote or greater to move something forward. So that's how the bylaw 110 moved ahead based on work that's been done within the board and staff. Uh, for an, an adoption of new language in bylaw 110. Boys volleyball came through what I would consider the traditional process, five or more member schools submitting a request for it to be considered. It went out to the regions, was approved by nine of our 16 regions, which then means it moves on to the rep assembly, ultimately for a vote. And so that information, both the voting as well as the, the reasons and our comments from each of the region committees are also supplied to our rep assembly members. And then that is when they take take that vote at our rep assembly meeting. Bob, I'm going to turn it back to you. Yeah, good, Eric. And, and again, rep assembly, the outcome is determined by the representatives from your region committees. Activity proposal process is determined by our board. And uh, we'll continue to talk about that, making sure you understand um, how they are unique and really different from each other. Let's talk a little spring eligibility here. Questions that have come up, use this opportunity to create clarity, hope for, hopefully as uh, we're getting into our spring season. Uh, baseball, we were down to under 30 uh, schools that had not registered for their pitch count, um, um, pitch count software as of yet. Uh, make sure that you are registered and utilizing your pitch count. Pitch count with a K is um, the actual software that we use. Uh, most of those schools are still in the North, not playing yet but there are consequences if you are not recording your pitch counts. I would also ask that you uh, make sure you understand your game, any procedures in baseball and softball. Understand a suspended game um, versus a complete game. Uh, those are found in the rules and policies, both for baseball and softball. Let's make sure that uh, we're playing complete games and we're not playing when a suspended game is actually a complete game. Uh, golf. Again, I have Wanamaker is required during the postseason. Uh, strongly encouraged, recommended during the regular season. Uh, if you do not use it during the regular season, you are not um, your student athletes are not eligible for awards. So uh, continue to use that. Uh, contact any of us if you have questions on those. And then we're getting the questions about varsity contests versus lower level contests, um, mainly around Bylaw 111, but also Bylaw 411. So the student athlete that is not varsity eligible, mainly due to transfer and residence in many cases, we hear about a, a quote unquote varsity JV combination, for instance, track meet. Just remember according to bylaw 411 and NFHS rules for something like track, that there really is no such thing as a varsity JV combination meet. If there are varsity athletes participating, uh, those that are not eligible for varsity contests would not be eligible to compete. So again, work with your coaches, making sure that they understand 
protect your students and your team's eligibility um, when using uh, athletes that are not varsity eligible. Also game modifications and meeting with our liaisons again uh, this week and we greatly value, uh, value their, their feedback and all their hard work and working with many of our schools. Um, if and when we get um, a majority of our state playing sports like baseball and softball. Again, there's a large portion that are not playing baseball as of yet and, and are a ways away from that. When we do get a majority of the state that is playing uh, game modifications, such as a five inning double header, which uh, that question is starting to come up, we will pose that question and uh, potentially create a game modification option once we start playing those games. It's not ideal to have that five inning double header um, according to the NFHS rules. We want to play that seven inning game whenever possible. But if we do have to modify, we'll look at that if our weather doesn't improve. Um, Eric or Charlie or Laura, anything I missed there? Otherwise, Charlie, let's talk a little bit more about the spring season. Great, thanks, Bob. Uh, and as Bob mentioned, we, um, we continue to appreciate the work and time of our liaisons. Um, the other thing is we depend uh, upon them in our quest to serve you uh, as ADs across our state better. Um, and what we heard from them loud and clear is that the spring continues to bring challenges. Um, weather probably being first and foremost, uh, our colleagues right now in the northwest corner of the state uh, are getting dumped on and, and uh, trying to dig out of a blizzard. Uh, we still have uh, uh, temps dipping below freezing, and uh, that, that just makes uh, spring participation uh, challenging for, uh, uh, for all of us. So, you know, know this, that if you've played uh, any contests uh, outdoors uh, or even any contests indoors, um, be thankful. Right, because uh, because there are, are corners of uh, our state where that has been a real challenge this year. So we'd be thankful if you've played. Um, we also know that uh, officials continue to be a struggle um, based on uh, original schedule now becoming uh, rescheduled events and uh, having contests scheduled uh, earlier in the day, uh, making it challenging to, to get officials to contest. Uh, and of course, just the, the reduced number, number of officials that we have. And again, know that uh, that's something that's uh, our collective responsibility in recruiting, uh, attracting, retaining uh, quality officials. Um, uh, not only is that the responsibility of, of us here at the league, but also each of you in, in uh, your corner of the state, um, if you could recruit one official, um, we could have uh, 500 new officials uh, next year alone. And uh, so let's uh, let's all shoulder that burden together and and um, do what we have to do to um, uh, to provide higher quality officials and more officials. Um, and then uh, we know that there are supply chain issues. Uh, I can speak specifically to tennis as we're prepping for state tennis tournament. Um, shortages are limiting our access to the uh, the Wilson U.S. Open tennis ball. Uh, I know that's one example. We know uniforms are a problem. We know baseball hats are a problem. Uh, and so you continue to, to try to navigate your uh, spring programs uh, with that challenge as well. And so uh, just know that uh, uh, we understand what you're facing. Uh, we're here to support you um, and your li liaisons have done an excellent job in, in making sure that uh, uh, they're communicating with us those challenges. And uh, Laura, I'm gonna pass it to you. Great, thanks Charlie. And I'll walk through some quick takes and a checklist for all of us. Um, quick takes a reminder that the Minnesota State High School League Hall of Fame banquet is Sunday, April 25th. Tickets need to be purchased by today, Friday, April 15th. You can find the listing of the inductees as well as ticket information underneath about on the website. And it is an amazing list of inductees that are going in from all across the state representing a wide variety of people. Um, a new AD lead will be held on Tuesday, April 19th. An email has come out from our office to ADs about that. It will also be in today's update. New ADs, as it's referred to, there are really people within their first three years of being an AD or anyone else who feels like it might be helpful for them, but really aimed at those in the first three years of their role as an AD. Um, a session will be held on Wednesday, April 20th at 7.30 a.m. 
for those looking to meet the AD requirement of completing the head coaches course. And again, in today's update, there will be information for that, but that might be an opportunity for you to jump in and complete that part. And then a note that we've talked about in a number of audiences, but I don't believe in LEAD as a whole, in-person area meetings will not be held this spring. Um, we did hold in-person area meetings last fall for the first time in about a year and a half, but will not be holding those this spring. Um, we continue to look at the ways that we provide information and communicate and work most efficiently and effectively. And what happens through LEAD and updates and other things uh, will be used this spring to meet that requirement of area meetings. In today's update, um, you'll also see a projected schedule of fall area meetings for fall 2022. So those of you that want to get that on your calendar, um, please watch for that in today's update. Moving ahead to a, a checklist, um, things that should be on your radar right now. One is summer coaching waiver. Again, a reminder that all coaches who want the opportunity to work with students on their teams during the summer need your permission to do that. Um, that opportunity has been on their dashboard since last fall. You should be approving those as they come in, but also doing some checking to make sure that you have everyone. And it's starting to sound a little routine, but directions for that will be in the update again today. Um, do take some time and double check to make sure that your master eligibility list is up to date as you are into spring sports. And sometimes we get students joining um, late for a team. Um, make sure that that master eligibility is up to date. The eligibility brochure for next school year, 22-23, has generally been available at about this time of the year. This year, that eligibility brochure will be coming to you after the June board meeting. And that is because of the anticipated change or the potential change to bylaw 110. So know that that is not available and will not be available as it has been on a regular schedule, but will be coming to you late. And then a heads up, Finally, um, in mid-May, you'll be getting an email and some instructions with really four tasks on them for you to wrap up this year and get ready for next year. That'll include submitting participation numbers. It'll include registering for the activities that your school is going to do in 22-23. It'll be placing a fall supply order and it'll be the information and instructions around the membership resolution that your board of directors or board of control completes. So some of those are things you can start thinking about and preparing for right now if there are activities that your school may be dropping or adding for next year. Um, the more accurate numbers we can get when we do those registration pieces in May, um, the better we are. So continue to watch for information on those four tasks, as well as um, getting ready for them as they get come in mid-May. I'm going to turn it back to Bob to wrap up the meeting. Yeah, good. Thank you very much, Laura. And just a reminder too on our, uh, our handbook and that eligibility brochure, we spent a lot of time talking about bylaw 110. We do have some proposed changes coming in bylaw 111 only in policy. So look forward to that. We'll update you on that as we get closer to changes to bylaw 111 and the policy, not the bylaw um, coming before you. Uh, as we finished up the winter tournament season, uh, feels like that was just took place. We're already gearing up for our state speech tournament. So good luck to all of our participants who are preparing for their uh, state speech tournament. Uh, congratulations to our hall of fame. Um, and I uh, would love to see you at that banquet as well. And, um, you know, Charlie did a great job of talking about officials and um, recruitment and retention. We also know we have a number of AD positions that are opening here in the state, and uh, we need to work and continue to serve you to make sure that returning, uh, retaining our ADs, and there's a group of them right behind Susie right, right now waving at us. So um, thank you again. We'll see you here in a couple of weeks back at lead. Uh, have a great day okay. and let's start playing our spring sports. Yeah. Thank you. Okay.